the American education system was the premier system and example of innovation and leadership to the rest of the world. I use the word was because that was 40 years ago. Today, American education is behind the rest of the world in math, sciences, and reading. How could this be possible considering the legislation surrounding education? For example, the Every Student Succeeds Act of 2015, which succeeded the No Child Left Behind Act of 2001. This act was intended to ensure higher quality education, leading to increases in college attendance and better career opportunities in the future. The gaps between the academic achievements of white children and children of color has seen little change since the Brown v. Board decision was passed by the Supreme Court in 1954. What have American schools lost or changed to have gone from a leader in education to being subpar compared to other countries today? How do we fix a system that is broken and failing our students? Do we continue to look at the tried and failed ways of the past? When do we begin asking the students what they need to excel? The education system needs the buy-in of our students it is serving to be successful. Educators and other stakeholders must move beyond thinking standardized testing for all students is the answer. Standardized testing weighs heavily on income and location as far as the level of academic performance that is achieved, which is another indicator of failing our students. We must begin acknowledging the root causes of why students are not achieving, despite interventions like IEP, individual education plans. Class sizes continue to increase. More electives are being lost to budget cuts and behavioral issues that have become the norm in classrooms across grade levels. Solving the issues in our classrooms will not happen until class sizes are reduced, teachers and other school and support staff are trained to not just look for overt signs of abuse, like physical bruising, but also bullying. We talk about it taking a village or a neighborhood policing to raise children. Education, too, requires the entire team of parents, teachers, school social workers, community partners, and student mentors. Some studies have shown that standardized testing is unfair and partial to students in better performing districts. Classes remain overcrowded, and teachers that have a poor academic record are gaining tenure, essentially damning students to a poor education. Interventions like REP, IEP, excuse me, are no longer proving to be useful because teachers have too large of a class size to focus on the individual approaches the IEP recommends. Small class sizes mean students could receive more individualized attention so that deficits in reading, math, and sciences could be addressed before they leave elementary school. In this slide, it shows the seven steps involved in the IEP process. The IEP process is meant to bring necessary stakeholders together, and these goals are all obtainable. One through five are easily obtainable. We tend to fail our students at step six. Step six becomes challenging for teachers to implement the interventions because of the size of classrooms and because they cannot devote that individualized attention that the IEP is recommending. Step six also becomes challenging if you do not have the buy-in of parents and the support from school administration. For improvements in education to start, we must look at decreasing classroom sizes, then qualified teachers, taking a community approach to education, we must start looking outside the box to make education fun, inviting, and innovative. We must ensure students feel safe enough to express themselves, and they must feel protected from ridicule and bullying. In the 1980s and early 1990s, students had options like shop class and opportunities for exposure to career options that did not rely on a college degree. We need to diversify options for students beyond charter and magnet schools. In providing students with options, it is also important that we provide teachers with options as well. We cannot continue to pigeonhole our educators with standardized tests and other metrics that do not consider the individual strengths of the students they are educating. As students grow and change, we must develop their qualities and positive characteristics. Once students are in junior high school, there should be efforts made 
to harness their natural abilities and interests. Student studies shown in these next two slides show significant declines in the number of high school graduate, graduates and college enrollees. And they also acknowledge that most high school graduates are not academically ready to attend two and four year institutions. We also cannot continue limiting the opportunities of students to excel by allowing tenure to keep unsuccessful educators on the front line. Teacher tenure has become a debatable subject in education, originally started in the early 1900s with the intent to improve the quality of education, is now being scrutinized for not using tougher guidelines to grant tenure by giving it too quickly or to just anyone. Arguments against tenure include keeping unethical teachers and or those who are unable to show academic success or progress year after year. A documentary called Waiting for Superman gives a chilling account of the public education system in communities across the nation and how teacher tenure has led to poor academic achievement. In this documentary, Michelle Ray, Chancellor of DC Schools, attempted to introduce an, altern uh, an alternative to awarding tenure. Their idea was to phase out tenure and allow teachers to choose raises based on merit instead. The idea was to increase academic performance and improve test scores. To accomplish this, it required the removal of ineffective teachers and the principals that protected them. While this reform was being proposed, it met with opposition from the teachers unions who feared teachers would be fired indiscriminately. After sharing this information with you, you may ask, how does this affect me, or what can I do about it? I ask you to understand that whether you have school-age children or not, the education of today's children will dictate our future leaders. What can you do to help evoke a positive change? Pay closer attention to the education bills that are being introduced by legislators. Get involved in what is going on in your local school districts. Supporting our students means we must hold parents, school officials, and lawmakers accountable that we lay the foundation and provide the groundwork for our students' future. In other words, get educated and get involved. Thank you.